election actually happens between July 24th to the 27th, that's early voting. You can vote at any location and there's probably over 30 locations that you can vote at. You can vote at any of those locations Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, on July 31st, it's the actual election day and then you can only vote at your specific precinct uh, that you can uh, location. Our goal is to phone bank and block walk every weekend and, and make phone calls throughout the week, Monday through Thursday. Uh, we're also wanting to put together another Tacos and Votes, which we're going to target on a Friday, which is uh, July 27. It's the last day of early voting. We're going from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And the location that we want people to go vote at is the Hardy Great. Senior Center. We're covering 12 precincts. The total registered voters in all 12 precincts is almost 19,000 people. So what we're doing is we're targeting, of, of these 19,000 people, we're targeting uh, about 2,200 people. 2,200 Latinos. We're going to target 2,200 Latinos out of 12 precincts. We're going to hit them four times. We're going to hit them initially with a phone bank, which we've already started. Uh, we're going to hit them with a mail piece. We're going to hit them, we're going to block walk one time, and then we're going to hit them right there at the very end during, uh, during the early vote uh, to try to say, hey, we need to We've already talked to you a couple of times, we've seen our, our mailers, uh, please go out and vote. It is imperative that the Latinos come out and vote in higher numbers than any other group because of the weight that it carries for you know their family or their neighbors who can't vote. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, of Latinos who are, are residents or undocumented citizens and uh, you know they live amongst us and, and uh, and, and still, you know, take part of this society in America, and we need to represent them as well. So what's great about our group is that we're we're not associated with campaigns uh, whatsoever. We're just a group of Latinos that are concerned about education and safety. And uh, these two candidates happen to be extreme advocates for education, for safety, and for Latino community. So uh, because we're concerned about education and safety, we're we're rallying behind these two candidates. Good afternoon, I'm looking forward to phone banking. Thank you for selecting me as one of your candidates. I really am passionate about education. And this is important because a lot of times voters that either don't vote as often or, not looked at, or are not looked at as reliable voters do not receive the information. They don't receive the contact. So they don't really even get to study the issue. So just by even informing them, giving them that option to learn about candidates, you know, hopefully they will vote for us, but even if they're interested and they choose, you're, you're empowering them and maybe they'll stay involved and learn about other candidates. And so it is a cycle that the less someone votes, the less they even get touched to know. So by pulling uh, people back into the process, you're really doing a long-term service. So thank you for that with your group, really trying to increase the voting of Latinos long-term. something very unique we're doing something very different uh, by making sure that we educate the community on the issues that affect them most that the issues that matter and so those issues we feel that are universal not just the Latino community but to every community is education and safety if you look at it there's Harris County officials there's 20 positions only three are Latinos Harris County courts where when we're talking about the judges uh, there's 99 positions, only nine are Latino. On the Harris County Board of Education, there's seven positions and there's only one Latino. And actually, he's on his way out, so we're basically gonna have zero if we don't elect one. Houston City Council, there's 17 positions and we only have two. And of course, we know who those are. That's H&I, that's James uh, Rodriguez, and then also Ed Gonzalez, uh, which is a uh, city council. Okay, and then we look at Mayor Parker's staff, their executive staff, there's 17 positions uh, that are part of our executive staff and there's only one Latina that's on that position. Uh, when we're 44% and what you're seeing these numbers. Superintendents, and this is the scary one, is that we have 26 superintendents uh, out of all of the ISDs that are part of Harris County and there's not one Latino or Latina that's serving uh, 
as a superintendent. And now the school board members, there's over 184 and only 15 are Latinos, so we're looking at representation less than 9%. And we're 44% of the population. So this is the reason why we believe education and safety matters and that we need to elect people that have agendas that are Latino friendly. If we, at the very minimum we can turn out 212 people, then it's an absolute success because in runoff elections, uh, it's probably the, the lowest turnout of any election, right? So if you turn out the same amount of people as in the Democratic primary, then it's a success. And if we're able just to accomplish 612 people, uh, that's probably going to be something like 2 to 3 percent of the overall turnout. If this number stays the same with Latinos, um, then, then, uh, it, then the percentage of Latinos that actually voted shoots up, right? And so so the, our percentage of voters shoots up and then we, we're electing two, two candidates that are, are very qualified, are going to be very good for education and safety in the Latinos.